head now to Bloomberg Surveillance, where uh, PIMCO CEO Mohamed El Arian is speaking with Tom Keane and Ken Pruitt. Let's listen in. Louisiana, Egypt, uh, with the idea of exports from the United States, equivalent to Dominican Republic. But what an outside response. And we see somewhat contagion this morning with Jordan. Uh, is, the, is the issue here past crisis that we see con contagion effect from Tunisia to Egypt and onward in the Middle East? Yeah, what's interesting, Tom, is Egypt is systemic, but not for the usual reasons. So the usual reasons is either it's a country with a big export base, or it's a country that can impact commodity prices, or it's a country that has lots of debt outstanding to banks. That is not Egypt. But Egypt is systemic in two senses. One is it's an enabler of world trade. Remember, about 10% of, of world trade goes through the Suez Canal. And secondly, importantly, it is a facilitator of geopolitical calm in a region that is prone to volatility. So Egypt becomes systemic, but in a different sense than what we normally think of when we say systemic. Uh, let's say Mubarak goes, which people are telling us is the most likely scenario here. I mean, even if he doesn't, he's elderly and, and not in good health. Uh, d does the transition go directly to a democracy? I think you're going to see three steps if Mubarak goes, and it's, and it's a big if. One is a transition regime. It could be under the leadership of the vice president. It could be under the leadership of Mr. El-Baradri, um, who is, has evolved as the main opposition um, movement leader. Second stage would be parliamentary election, followed by the rewriting of the Constitution and then presidential elections. That would be um, the path if President Mubarak decides to go. Well, this is a country where two-thirds of the population is under the age of 30, and, and, and many of those people are college graduates with no jobs. How do you turn that around? Yeah, we have a, a, a very able economist here, um, Lupin Rahman, who has done an incredible study of looking at what youth unemployment is. And when you look at Egypt, you're talking about 35%. And, and that is a big issue. Um, Egypt is not defenseless in terms of its economy. It's, it's, it's a diversified base. It's a large domestic mm. market. It's financially very strong, $35 billion of reserves, virtually no external debt. So Egypt has the enabling well, conditions. Yeah, go, go ahead, Mom, please continue. So Egypt has the enabling conditions if you could channel all this in a positive manner and if you could overcome the rigidities that have stopped Egypt from fulfilling its potential. Tell me, Mohammed, about the time of your childhood, Albert Harani talking about a liberal Egypt of the middle 20th century. Is there a whisper of getting back to that, or does Egypt have to move on to something new? You know, Egypt will certainly move on to something new. The Egypt of tomorrow will not be the Egypt of eight days ago. The genie is out of the bottle. Um, people feel empowered. People are looking for change. And it's critical that this change be managed in, in a positive way. So look for Egypt to go forward. Um, it is yet to define fully its journey and its destination. Well, that's an interesting take from PIMCO's Mohamed El Arian speaking about the crisis in Egypt.